So we, we know there's seven systems, we know there's three phases. It's starting to sound a little bit complex, but as Einstein said, you know, make things as simple as possible, but no simpler. So as you've just said, they are there. The question yeah. is, do you recognize they're there and do you use that as a decision-making tool to grow your business or not? This week, I'm very excited to be back with Shannon Susco, the creator of Metronomics and the author of The M Game, Metronomics, Three Hag Way, and The Metronome Effect. It's great to be back with you, Shannon. Well, I'm so excited to be back as a guest on my own podcast. It's so great that you're here and that we're working together. No, absolutely. I'm, lo I'm loving this, really enjoying these sessions. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about the three phases of metronomics. Now, these were covered in Metronomics, the book, but it wasn't really until the end game where, mm. where you went into those in detail. Chapter eight, if I remember correctly. Yes. Yes. And I mean, I think the big deal about that, Jed, was to actually get the right sort of story into metronomics and to actually reflect what actually ha happens to companies, we needed to put time on it. So we actually split them into year one, year two, year three, where, which rep represented the foundation growth phase, the momentum growth phase, and the compounding growth phase. And you know what? We didn't call them correctly in, in metronomics. I'm just going to say that we didn't name them correctly because as you know, and I know, uh, some of our clients are in those phases longer than four quarters, right? Some companies definitely go, you know, four quarters, they've gone through the foundation, you know, four quarters, they've gone through moment, momentum and four quarters gone through compounding. That's not as, uh, that doesn't happen as often as we all would like. And we do know that for, for certain reasons that we're going to talk about today, why this is so important and why we brought it out in the M game is really about, you know, making sure you understand which growth phase you're in and why. And then that gives you the actions that you need to take in order to unlock and move the company forward. Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. Now, after I'd been working with metronomics for a few years, I noticed that that some companies were going really fast and they were continuing their growth, whereas others were they were they were stalling. They were stalling at a certain point, or they they were topping out at a certain dollar revenue value. And at the time, I was thinking very much that this was all about um, cohesive leadership teams, but I could I could also see that they, they, it wasn't just that, and I was struggling to really understand what what we were missing what we hadn't really picked up on and at one of the coaches uh, webinars you, you went through the three phases of metronomics i think it was uh, before before whistler um last year uh, and as you went through those three phases it suddenly clicked for me that was what was not working that was why companies were topping out they were stuck at the top of the uh, foundation phase so i think that really revealed to me what i was missing what the, these companies were missing yeah and I, I think it picks up on you know the awareness factor right so i think as coaches and as entrepreneurs you know even in my own companies we would get so far and then get stuck and a lot of people give up at that point on the stuck. They're on the edge of the foundation phase. And there's a few things that if they they just tweaked, if they were aware what they were, um, it actually will unlock their growth to create the momentum they need to go into the next phase. And the funny thing is, as we did the research for Metronomics, the book, and as well have you know carried that on into the M game. The thing that we saw is that you know a cohesive leadership team is absolutely needed to win. You know, well the high performing teams, yeah, are you know for sure cohesive. Um, high performing teams uh, to win, you can be uh, you know a very cohesive team and you might not win, right? And that's sometimes we see that 
And that's exactly what some of our companies would see. They might have all the right, uh, what I, you know, players on their team. Maybe they have all the right players on their leadership team. They're still not winning. Right. So what's that missing? Could, that could be a case. Hmm. And what's the missing key there? things. Yeah. And, and the funny thing is the things that are normally in place and Jed, I know you see this and I know that you've observed this and probably lived this. And most people listening have too, is that we get when we're in a company, big, small, starting out hundred years old, we have usually a cash system that's at a certain level. It's usually working. We sustain ourselves. We've got that working. We have an execution system. Great. It's it's working. And in some cases, it's working. It only works if the leaders are involved in some cases. But they have a system. Um, they have, you know, a little bit of a cultural system working. And we'll talk more about that. They have a little bit of, you know, they have the cohesive system working. They have clarity of expectations of who's doing what. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. And the, the last thing that, you know, I, I've seen in, in those levers that we just talked about, those systems, you know, in order for a team to get all the way to the edge of the foundation phase, and then they have, you know, check on all those things, and they don't get to the momentum side is the most common thing I see is a lack of confidence in strategy. Lack of confidence in strategy. They, if you ask, and I've asked many, many CEOs, um, you know, are you confident enough to stand up in a room of 100 people, 50 people, 20 people, your form mates, and say your strategy out loud? The answer is always, I mean, I, I've been doing this for, I don't know, 14 years. The answer, it's only been one or two times has anyone ever stood up. And so that lack of confidence means that the CEO is not confident. They can't see. They don't know what it is. They usually have a pretty good idea, but they can't describe it. And then the rest of the team doesn't know either. And so we can have like so many things right but if you have one of those things that are not, you know, and I always say there's five things, but not in place, you can't, you get stuck on the edge of the foundation phase. And I'll say the biggest, uh, the biggest issues we see, and I know you have similar experience. We work with companies that have a cash system moving. They have an execution system going. Um, they may or may not have a mapped strategy. And that's one of the things that will hold them back. And map strategy means the whole team built the strategy together. They can see it. They can tell the story. It's not perfect. It's not fully validated, but it is not in one person's head. It is in the collaborative brain of the leadership team. And we can actually get that work done without having a fully cohesive leadership team and without having a full A player leadership team. But I would say the thing that I see the most that holds back that, you know, I love strategy. You know that I love building, mapping, validating strategy. But the thing that holds us back and the teams I work with is not, number one, having a 100% A player leadership team, meaning they have the core values. They all have the same core values, right? They all are, you know, high performers exceeding expectations either in their current role or where they came from and they are what we call a normalized cohesive team it's the not having the a players in place usually holds teams back and the the biggest thing is i get asked so many times is why 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 is that holding companies back right and I think you know the answer. I know the answer. I think the listeners know the answer. It's because humans are involved. And there's many reasons why people are on a team. But it doesn't always mean that it's going to get you there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and what I what I see with companies when they stall at that point, when they're at the end of the foundation phase, you know, they you know, they're they're probably churning their leadership team. You know, they are probably uh, you know, they're they're switching their strategy or they're not clear on their strategy 
And at that point, you, you know something has to change significantly for them to get through into the, into the next phase. So that transition from foundation into momentum is really hard. It's really, really hard. Mm -hmm. Well, and I would say we run into a lot of companies, you as well, you know, um, meeting companies who are stuck. They're stuck in the three areas that prevent growth. They're stuck, you know, the number one barrier to growth, leadership. And leaders don't want to hear that, but leadership is the number one barrier to growth. The number two barrier to growth is understanding, you know, and having the market expertise required. And that's just not the CEO and just not the sales leader and just not the marketing leader is everyone at the table must be a market expert. They have to. And then the third barrier to growth is the scalable and infrastructure, right? Having scalable infrastructure and process. And if you think about it, it gets back to balancing people and process in the arena that we're playing in. But those are the three barriers to growth that we're seeing companies who are stuck in the foundation phase. And companies who are stuck in the foundation phase, sometimes, you know, without the awareness, the way it's written in the M game, the way it's written even in metronomics, there's some key questions that you that every company can ask themselves you know they're yes or no and you can easily figure out which phase you're in which i think is really important but i do want to add that most companies most i'm talking like 90 plus percent of companies are in the foundation growth phase even if they're just getting a little bit of you know growth year over year they're slogging it out and it's hard Yep. And you know, getting a getting a client from foundation into momentum, you know, that's 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 um that's a really exciting phase. You start to see the performance of the company just lift. And uh, everything it's like it's like a sewing machine. Everything just everything's just working. Mm -hmm. It is so exciting. And the thing that I love is that the leadership team isn't working in the business anymore. Right? They're working on the business. And selfishly, I'm going to say with me as the coach, working on the business, and it is so fun because the business systems, the cash system, the execution system, right? The, what we call the, the human system where we understand what's expected of each other of the, on the team, and that's working really well, right? Those are the things that we, we get going, and then we get to focus on the business. And we hear that said a lot, but no one says, how do you get to that phase of growth where you can work on the business? It's like ticking the boxes in the foundation phase and ensuring we have those, you know, the cash system working, the execution system working. We have an A player leadership team. It's cohesive. So they trust one another and can have healthy conflict and they have a map strategy. Oh, and I love go. I love working with teams and taking them through that process. And I can tell you, and I know the team's always excited when they know they've checked the boxes. We work with them on that. We work them through it when they move over into that momentum phase. Super exciting. Yep, yep, yep. And and in in the M game, you use the term critical path. You know, and uh, the the critical path is a really good way of explaining that transition. Do you want to take us through that critical path quickly? Yeah, I do. I mean, this is where I can tell you in metronomics and writing that book and doing the research and then um, sharing the geeky, the geekiest of data and diagrams. And uh, lots of people said, don't share that with anybody. And I was like, well, I really need to share it because it really shows you know, the path and the critical path through this, you know, and if anyone's read the book or if you're going to look at the book and, and look at that graphic, there's a top line in that graphic and it's the cohesive system. And the cohesive system is, you know, one of the, the keepers of that path. And it's the thing that will actually turn on the, the next, and that's why we call it a critical path. You must have certain things aligned before you can actually unlock the next thing. And in the foundation phase, the thing that holds back most teams is the A player leadership team 
that is cohesive. And I call it normalized cohesiveness. And that comes from uh, Bruce Tuckman that we can talk about later, but that comes from his work from like decades and decades ago. But that's the one thing that holds teams back because it doesn't allow the organization to actually validate a strategy and it doesn't allow the organization and the leaders to work on the business. You just can't get there. It's proven over and over and we have that data. And that got unlocked and that's where most companies get held up. If we have that in place, plus we mapped our strategy out and the three hag strategy system is a really nice like paint by numbers for strategy. It doesn't get any better than that. That's what I was looking for as a CEO. You map it out and you're going to sit that and align it up with your A player leadership team that's cohesive and you have your execution and cast system working. Then you can turn on there's this line that goes right through the middle of this graph. And the line that goes right through is the strategy system. You can all day long map a strategy, but even mapped, you won't have CEOs standing up in a thousand person room and going, I'll tell you my strategy and be so confident in it unless they validate it. And it takes a cohesive leadership team together with their coach. I'm going to say it out loud with their coach, challenging it, removing the blind spots, you know, calling out the truth. I made a LinkedIn post yesterday about calling out the truth, like this best thing my coach ever did to actually ensure that we're validating right? Validating the strategy so that every quarter, every week, every quarter, we validate that strategy. And actually, that's what creates the momentum. It's so silly, but it's so human. Creates the momentum while we're continuing on the execution system, the cash system. We're building the cohesiveness. We're building the human system, right? And we're starting to work towards that, that time. And you know, you were at Tip Top last year and I was there and I asked, does anybody want to stand up and say their strategy out loud? And I expected some people to do so. And they did. They stood up and they, they don't know who's in the room. They don't know if any of their competitors in the room, but they were so confident in their strategy that they, they no holds barred stood up and said their one phrase strategy out loud. And I'd probably, if I brought them up on stage, we would have had a long conversation about it. That's when you know you're in the momentum phase. You are absolutely confident. The thing from there, as we continue to build the cohesiveness to that third stage, which is Team Trust 2.0. Team Trust 2.0 sounds a bit cliche and, and goofy, but it's really taking the cohesive level of the leadership team where they're going to be vulnerable to not only that leadership team, but to the rest of the organization. They have no problem. And this is where, you know, one of the companies I work with, and there's quite a few CEOs I work with now are in the momentum and the compounding phase. They actually have no problem sharing their review, the CEO shares the review with the whole company and tells them what they're going to be working on this quarter and next quarter and so on. They're absolutely an open book and willing to let people know that, yep, we're not perfect. <laughs> we are growing as fast as we can to keep up with the growth of the company. Now, and by, by review, are you referring to the scaling leadership and the lead, leadership circle profile, the LCP? Yeah. So yeah. the scaling hmm. leadership review is one of them. I love that. Uh, mm -hmm. From Bill, I always get it wrong. I'm going to get Anderson, it wrong. Bill and Bob. Bill and Bob. Bill and Bob. <laughs> Bill and Bob. I know. I'm going to go <laughs> Bill and Bob because I get the <laughs> last names confused. Mm -hmm. But um, yes, using that, because that, that's a leadership circle, it's a fantastic way to get feedback. Yeah. But we also at that stage, what I've seen uh, the CEOs I work with, and I highly encouraged it, once we work through that, is to share their review that's on the metronome platform that it was done by, you know, the CEOs are sharing their 360 review that their leaders did on them and they share it with the whole company, all the feedback, everything they're working on, what the professional development is. They can look at last quarters and they can look at this quarters. That is absolute best practice. And it really changes the level, you know, that level of vulnerability within the organization. I can tell you in these organizations, you know, actually sets off and unlocks 
that last system that's on the critical path, which we need to unlock, which is the coach cascade system. And the coach cascade system, if we're not growing our team and our leaders into coaches, you can't keep up. You know this and I know this. You cannot keep up with the growth that your organization's having and you will stall out. And so, but without that level of vulnerability from the leadership team and sharing with the rest of the organization, it's really hard to unlock the coach cascade system. So you're building your confidence in your strategy. You're unlocking, hey, I'm human. I'm a learning. I'm growing as a leader. And then we're unlocking the coach cascade. It starts a little bit, before, you know, it starts about midway through what we call the momentum phase. But without Team Trust 2.0, again, you're going to get stalled. And I've seen companies get stalled and I've seen companies fly through this stage to compounding. Yeah, and there's very few leaders out there that are willing to be that vulnerable. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a rare leader that is prepared to, prepared to do that in front of the, the, whole, the whole company. Uh, and the, the, I mean, for, for me, the, when, when, because when 3 Hag Way came out, there were six systems. Yeah, yeah. And Coach Cascade system came along as the seventh of six systems. So now where do we where do we put this? Well, this underpins everything. So it goes underneath the foundations. It's what the house is built on. And you know what? Now, the funny thing is, I couldn't figure out how to explain it. I wasn't sure. I knew it was really important. And you'll see places in Metronome Effect and Three Hagway where there's alludance to it, but I couldn't explain it. It took me a lot to explain it. But the, the thing where it went back to is, you know, where we took off in my first company was when my coach um, was coaching me to coach my leaders and came in and worked with me as a coach of my leaders to coach myself and my leadership team, right? So we could work together to coach them to create coaches on their team and so on. And it took like every step in that system from the start of it all the way through, there's a progression and we know every system has a progression and we're trying to keep them balanced as we grow because that's what holds us back if we don't keep it in balance. And it was, it was our, it was my coach of the day that had, you know, opened my eyes to, you know, yeah, great. I had a CEO coach. Great. They really helped me get so far. But the thing that unlocked our organization going from the foundation to the momentum, that was a huge piece of it was understanding the level at which I needed to get the cohesiveness of my leadership team to in order, and, and I had to get to that level. Like I did a 360 review. You know, we didn't have the metronomic software platform of the time, but we did it. We sent it out to everybody, right? Everyone knew what I was working on as a leader. All my leaders shared theirs with the rest. We did it in town halls. We did it in our monthly meetings. It was just like very uncomfortable. <laughs> it's, it's a very hard thing to do. Um, but once, once it starts, it's so great. Because then people call you out and they go, you just did it again. And they actually do it in a nice way and they help you, right? They help you. And that, that's what unlocks that coaching, that feedback. And the one thing that's not, there may be as obvious as it should be, Jed, is the feedback loop. So the feedback loop of, you know, the coaching feedback loop, right? And and my my coach of the time was amazing at ensuring we understood the feedback loop. And it's why our reviews were called coaching reviews, because it wasn't a one-way review. It was a two-way review to drive self-awareness, to drive feedback, both, you know, from the leader to their player, their team member, and the team member got to give feedback to the leader on how well they were actually coaching and leading that individual and the team. It's just transformative. Yep. Yeah, I've I've often I've noticed that transition happen when you see someone's leadership circle profile move from yes. below the line reactive into above the line creative. 
Uh, and it's not going to yeah. happen until that until they make that transition. And and that can take yeah. that can take a while. That can take a year or two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I loved in uh, Jim Collins B 2.0 mm-hmm. where he talked about, you know, and I, I talk a little bit about it in metronomics is that leadership, you know, X dot O, whatever. Like I think of myself in my 20s as a CEO. Oh, boy. You know, my leadership circle profile was very reactive, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think about uh, CEO in my 30s. You know, I got a bit better. CEO profile in my 40s, got even better, you know, and still working on it. And even in my 50s, still working on it, right? And Mm -hmm. we know, you know, if if listeners haven't read this book, the lead, uh, it's scaling leadership, scaling leadership, scaling Mm -hmm. scaling leadership. I highly recommend it. I've read it quite a few times, but what I love about it is really looking at, you know, where you are and, and understanding the reactive behavior that you can have as a leader trumps so much creative behavior that you have. And we see, I know you coach leaders, I coach leaders, uh, we've grown up that way with that high self-awareness, but you can you can really see the damage it, it does, right? And you can pick out, I love in B2.0, because I use Steve Jobs as the example. And young Steve Jobs as a leader was like, ah, didn't didn't want to be there, didn't want to, I wouldn't have anything to do with that environment. But as he progressed, right, so did, you know, he went from reactive to being creative. And it's not quite explained like that in B2.0, but I can't recommend, you know, doing that leadership leadership circle assessment as much as, you know, it just <laughs> do it on your own first and yeah. then no, no, you know, absolutely. do it with your team. And the first time you yeah. do it, you're probably going to be profiled as a reactive leader. Uh, and I, I noticed a difference when um, when the CEO I was working with, he was only really prepared to share his LCP once he transitioned yeah. across to the creative leader. So, you know, ch- you know chicken and egg, I'm not uh, sure, but he was so proud of the fact yeah. that he'd actually moved himself up above the line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's yep. really, I love that you say that because in the momentum phase at that Team Trust 2.0, that's why it can get stalled. It's up to the CEO's willingness and desire to evolve their behavior. You know that, but I can't stress that enough because I've worked with uh, CEOs as well that, you know, it took the assessment, I would say, in a six week period like probably four times and it never moved. And they're like, that must be wrong. And like, I'm smiling and going like, it abs- you know, it absolutely reflected my view and my observations. And so I just thought like, until, and I, I watch this as clearly as you watch leaders grow through it. Once they moved it, right, they were willing to share it, right? And they shared it originally with a CEO roundtable, and they were like taken back to see how reactive they were at that time. It took a lot of work. It was good. It was a good environment to work it through. I, lo- I love roundtables for that reason. Yeah, and there's there's other models that are that are sort of a uh, probably less um, data oriented. I mean, um, multipliers and you know, Liz Wiseman's multipliers. That's a similar thing. Multipliers and diminishes, and and uh, intent based leadership. I can't remember who. Um, who who wrote that? But yeah, yeah, the the the, the submarine captain. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, oh, I think his first name's David. That's terrible. Yeah, Dave. Dave yeah, David. Yes, yeah, it is David. <laughs> it, it'll come but to I, me. We'll, we'll put it in the show notes. Think, we'll put it in the show notes. But I think yes, mm-hmm. and I think the key is that there's a. It's hard to as a leader. Uh, if I didn't have a coach at that point, I don't know if I would have saw that ever, right? The coach removed that blind spot for me to actually unlock that as a, uncomfortable as it was, unlock it, share it. And I have huge empathy for the leaders I work with and the CEOs I work with, knowing how difficult that's going to be. But if we build that cohesiveness and that trust, that's why it's Team Trust 2.0, then it gets way easier to share it with the leadership team. Everyone gets going. You know, there's a, it's not just a, 
you know, rip the bandaid off and go. There's a progression. I just want everyone to understand that and that we're setting that progression up so that we can share it with the rest of the leadership team for such an vast, you know, impact that moves a company from there to the coach cascade and into the compounding phase, right? And everybody wants to be in the compounding phase, but it's not about the top, like top line will be compounding, but most companies can't hang on very long to that compounding without all the work we're doing on all the other systems. And the goal of this is we have to compound, you know, the learning ability, the coaching ability and our team to keep up with the top line. That's why that phase is so important. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and you know, we, we, we may or may not choose to put that um that very very complicated um, critical pass um, picture up in the show notes. Maybe maybe not. Maybe maybe it's a bit too confronting. I don't I don't know. <laughs> I did talk the publisher of putting it into a book maybe twice or at least once. I think I got into the M game for sure. They they didn't want to include it. I just want to tell the listeners they didn't want to include that graph. But but I, I actually think it's very important. You know it's. Yes, it is confronting, but what it shows leaders is that there is a progression to get them from where they are right now to their three hag and beyond. And it maps out the changes in their business and in their systems that they need to be driving. So for us as coaches, it tells us where we need to push the lever next. You know, it tells us where we need to start focusing in, you know, because sometimes we're spending effort and time and resources in somewhere that is good enough for now. And to get to the next level, we actually need to shift focus and start working on somewhere else. Maybe the cash system, maybe the strategy system, maybe the cohesive system. So that progression pictorially is is awesome. And you know what I love? Uh, because I've worked with my clients for many, many years. And, and what I love is they, because we've done this for, you know, I have one client over a decade, another one's just approaching a decade, another one, eight years, eight years, seven years, like I've had them for a long time. They've done the assessment. I get them to do the assessment of the awareness of, you know, let, let's agree to what, what phase we're in and what things we need to do next. And we do a, a rolling four quarter plan. And what are the things we need, the steps we need to take in order to move it forward. But the thing that I love now is they're all of, like, they know the critical path. They, uh, they have an awareness of where they are and that they're actually planning with me on what the next steps are. And it makes it like, we just go so much faster because they understand and and know that critical path exists, whether you're aware of it or not, right? And the ones that aren't aware of it usually get stuck in the foundation phase. That's why that graph is so geeky, but so important. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's worth just going through those key points, those those things that, you know, those do not pass go points because uh, there's a there's three there's four or five of them on on that picture. I mean, going from foundation into momentum, you need the cohesive A player leadership team, so a normalized A player team, and you need a validated sorry a map strategy, not a validated strategy, a map strategy, and that's an important distinction. So you've probably gone through the strategy wheel. Now you've probably gone through steps one through ten, maybe not ten. You may you may have a guarantee, but you probably haven't implemented it yet. It's probably too soon. Uh, but you've got to get to that point before you can move into the momentum phase. There's four key things. There's the cash system's got to be working because if you don't have cash. You're just going to worry about cash. You don't have any time for anything else. So the cash system has to work. The execution system. We see lots of teams that we start working with. The execution system is working and they're sustaining themselves as an organization, but it's working with the leaders being involved and we want it to be working in a way for the leaders to become, you know, as we move forward, we need it to be working well enough and with a a view that the leaders won't have to be in the business driving that system. A player leadership team, must be cohesive. And then of course that map strategy, people might be listening and going, oh my gosh, that's a lot. But if you're thinking about asking, ask yourself the questions, if you're in the foundation phase, is your cash system working? It's a yes or no. 
right? So yes or no, okay. So if it's a yes, great. Um, if it's a no, you're in the foundation phase. Is the execution system working? And usually you know deep down, if you're listening to this as a leader, it's either working with you or you're working so many extra hours doing all the pulling. You're not cheering people on, you are pulling hard. So not quite, like it's working, but it's not working without you. So if it's a no, you're in the foundation phase. If it's a yes, great, check. Okay, we got two of the things we need. A player cohesive leadership team. That means 100% of your leadership team, you would fight for if they got a competing offer. You would fight for them. You're not going to let them go. If you hesitate in the least, you're going, it's a no. It's a no. And you're on the edge of the foundation phase. Okay, you're on the edge of the foundation phase. If that team is an A player, but we can't have those healthy, conflictive, like discussions we need. We don't have that tr team trust. We're not committed. We don't have the accountability. And we it's team, it's the team result over the individual result, right? That's just on the edge. That's a normalized team. Then that's a no. That's good though. We're almost there. And then having a map strategy. It can't be in one person's head. A map strategy means you can see the strategy. The leaders could tell the story the same as the CEO. We can see all the pictures. If it's a yes, and you said yes to every one of those questions, like congratulations, you are in the momentum phase. If you said no to any one of those, that's okay. At least you know where you are and which lever you need to pull on a bit harder in order to move forward. And it will make all the words. That's why the word we put with the growth foundation, that, that foundation growth phase, is the word ease. Not easy, but ease. Every one of those that you say yes to brings a little bit more ease to what's going on for you as a CEO and for you as a leadership team. If we go from there, I was going to say, if we go from there into the momentum growth phase, and I'm just going to sort of build, build it back up again. So the cash system's still working. The execution system's working. We keep that going. We have an A player cohesive leadership team. Okay, all those are still true, right? We, in order to actually move, you know, these are the things we need to build on. We need to take our cohesive level, as we talked about nicely, to the Team Trust 2.0 level, vulnerability with the leadership team and then the larger team. We're going to be confident in our strategy. That's what we're building in that phase. And then we have turned on the coach cascade. We're in the momentum phase. We are gaining speed. That's why we call that, we give the, the description, we, we have some speed and we're keeping up with the speed, right? Those are the things, the Team Trust 2.0, validated strategy and the Coach Cascade. And so if you're not confident in your strategy, you are in the foundation phase. You might be just moved. You might say yes to all those other ones. You might be on the edge, right? You're going, yeah, that's what I got to work on. Great. I got to work on that while I'm building team trust. Great. I got to build on that while I'm turning on the coach cascade. The other ones are going like a uh, like we can forget about them. They're working. That's how this works. So it doesn't get too complicated. So you, you use the, the 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 term ease, and uh, I thought it would be a good time to just uh, align those three words with the different phases. So ease, foundation, speed. It's momentum, that's when you're starting to build up speed. And then the last phase, the compounding phase, is confidence. Because that's really where three hag, your three hag is going to get to you, get you. It's all about having confidence in your strategy, confidence that you are going to get where you want to get to. Yeah. So when we get into that compounding phase, when we're answering the questions, and just so everyone who's listening in, you know, right now of my six clients, I have one in the compounding phase. They've been there for a while. I have two in the momentum and I have three in the foundation. And 
And just because you are in the foundation and you go to momentum doesn't mean you cannot fall back into the foundation. Stuff happens. So, so what, what can push you back? What can push you back? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to go all the way across to compounding and then I'm going to talk about what pushes you back. So in the compounding phase, the things that need to be true is Team Trust 2.0 is absolutely across the team. We have a validated strategy. We're confident in the steps we're taking, the decisions we make on, on the trade-offs. So we're not, you know, hesitating. Um, a player cohesive leadership team, execution system working, cash system working, and in the, the compounding phase, we are the coach cascade system. I say it's flowing, meaning it's flowing out through the organization. That's the thing. It's not perfect, but it's flowing. We're all the way there. It's like unlocked. The things that move you from the compounding phase and my client who is currently in the compounding phase, um, let's just say, for instance, the pandemic put every one of my clients back to the foundation phase. Why? Because they needed to be confident that their cash system was going to work in that quarter and the next 12 quarters. And every client I had went back. Every client went back and looked and remapped their strategy to ensure that it was exactly what was needed in the environment, the new environment we were playing in. So you can go from compounding all the way back, all the way back. <laughs> but you can also go compounding just back to momentum. And where that happens is if that something changes in the external marketplace you're playing in, where you lose confidence in your validated strategy. You can still have that A player cohesive leadership team. You can have the execution system, the cash system. You can have team trust. But we have to go back and do some validation and build back up. I've done that many times with this company and client in the compounding phase. We've had many, many clients, you know, and this one included the other reason why they've gone from compounding that compounding phase back to foundation is they have outgrown their leadership team. And they had to make some uh, adjustments and add some new people or replace some people on their leadership team. A high growth company, usually every three years, if you don't keep up with the growth, you can outgrow your leaders and the company outgrows the leaders, unfortunately. And so it puts you all the way back in, you know, rebuilding, putting an A player leadership team in place and you have to build back up the cohesiveness and that takes time. But for the teams that I've seen do it, you know, my, that team that's in the compounding phase, they, when, you know, we had a full discussion that this is what was going to happen. We had a 90 day, as soon as that um, leader was onboarded, we had a 90 day cohesive prescription that the CEO led to actually take two quarters to pull them back across to the compounding phase. That might sound complicated, but I know listeners are going, oh, is that what happened? Because I know I experienced that in my own companies with maybe not the full awareness, right? Maybe not the full awareness. And so that's one of the things that the biggest thing, and you know this as well, that we see compounding uh, growth phase companies move to momentum, momentum to foundation, but it goes all the way back when there's not an A player leadership team and there's not an A player leadership team that's cohesive. You go back to the foundation phase. It's the thing. It's probably the most critical thing. Yeah. And it's, as you say, it can take six months for that to get back to the level where, you know, with a new leader, where the team is, is, um, is there again. Yeah. And I, I noticed this. So, you know, one of the, one of the key things about companies not moving out of foundation is you know, particularly if they're burning leadership team members, you know, as soon as they've replaced someone, they've got to reset the whole team again. And it does take six months. They got to start again. Start again. And I know as a coach, and you know this too, but you know, and I fully prepped the team. I said, you know, Joey Smith's coming in to join the team. Uh, they're joining a couple of weeks before our quarterly planning session. We are going to start at the very beginning of the cohesive system. Off we go right? And we're going to start with the very basic questions as we have in the past, you know, and, you know, it's at the, and we have a progression in the cohesive system that we'll start again. And the more the teams 
actually go through the progression, um, the easier it is to actually bring and invest in those new team members. The funniest thing is in high growth companies, we know we are adding new team members every week, every month, and every leader has to understand the cohesive progression in order to keep the trust high so that we can have the best discussions to commit to what we need to get done, be accountable to that, and then own the team results. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, one of one of the speakers at uh, Tip Top last year, the the Metronomic Summit last year, um, uh, Paul Glazer, he was talking about every 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 time a company doubles, you're going to lose forty percent of your team because they they can't grow themselves fast enough. They can't keep up with the growth of the business. Now that doesn't mean they necessarily leave the business. It probably means that they are going to stay at a certain level, and someone's going to come in over the top of them because they don't have the skills, the experience, and the expertise to keep up with the growth of the business. Yeah. And, you know, as CEO, we definitely experienced that in my first company and my second company. But I can say, thankfully, the clarity of the scorecards in every case, having the position that they wanted to grow into or the position they were in that grew, it was really great because there was a high level of awareness on the team members part, whether they were growing at the speed at which we needed them to, they were actually so loyal and, you know, felt they were letting us down because they couldn't grow at that level and would ask, could they help, you know, choose that person who's going to come in and be their coach to grow them up to that level, whether that, you know, position was going to be available in the organization at the right time or not. And I know of one one instance where we we had to, you know, fill in the role that got very big. And, you know, the person was very disappointed. They didn't grow into that role in time. But we brought someone in, we coached them up to that level. We didn't have that position in our company, but we actually helped them go find that same role in another company. Were we sad to see them go? Absolutely. Was I so proud that they grew into what they wanted, you know, wanted to grow into? Like, that's the whole goal, right? And, you know, the core purpose was to be able to grow up our team and into what they wanted to be, you know, and we're lining that up with the growth of our companies. I thought now would be a good opportunity to just uh, to map the three phases into the Bruce Tuckman model. Now, most of most of the people listening will be familiar with the Bruce Tuckman model, even if it's um, even if it's not jumping out and straight away. But it, that that's that sets it really nicely, doesn't it? So, how does that how does that align? Well, you know, it was really interesting as we continue to do research for metronomics and just trying to put. Um, the things that we experienced and the awareness we had on the growth phases and how a team was formed. Now, metronomics is all about balance and we're balancing the soft edge and the hard edge systems. And they're connected to the three year highly achievable goal. And in particular, the widgets, the things that team members control, right? So that's, that's how it works. You know, you've got to stay in balance. And we are trying to be able to show through other research that we knew was legendary, like Bruce Tuckman's, and show how a team forms and what happens in each phase of growth. Well, you know, most teams and uh, lots of leaders stay focused on the hard edge, which is strategy, execution, and cash. Great. The soft edge is your cultural system, your cohesive system, and your human system, and the umbrella or the ultimate foundation, I could put it at either side, it's like the all-encompassing coach cascade, you know, that's all in there. But what we found in the research is that when we got clear on when a team was forming and storming, right, when, when a team gets through forming and storming and they have, you know, that hard edge cash system working and the execution system working, they actually get some ease, as we talked about, and it gets reflected in how the team members feel, but also the growth at which they experience. It's not that big growth at 20% more, but it's like, you know, somewhere between three and maybe 7%. And they're feeling pretty good at it, about it. And a lot of teams just stick there. 
They just stay there. there. That's good enough. But when we're forming and storming as a CEO, if you're listening, that's the hardest That's the hardest time in growing a business is in that storming stage. And when you stay in that storming stage a long time, so when you stay there for four quarters, for eight quarters, oh my God, you're getting tired. You're getting tired, right? We want to actually move a team through that phase as fast as possible. And when you get to the other side, that's that norming stage that Bruce Tuckman uses. And it's really nice because that's where you come out of when we get a normalized A player cohesive leadership team and we have execution and cash working, a map strategy, we move into that, you know, we move into that norming, you know, we're there, but we pick up the momentum, right? That's the momentum growth phase. And you know what? The instant, like I see it all the time with the companies I work with, the fiscal results on the top and bottom line are like at a whole nother trajectory than when they were in the forming and storming. It's like someone go, it's like, you know, the, the whole throttle, you know, sort of that gain that was holding them back is let go and they start running pretty fast. That's where we're validating the strategy and we're seeing that golden growth line start to go. Now, we know in the momentum phase, this is where that norming, we need to get to performing. And in Bruce Tuckman's model, it's performing, meaning the team members, the leaders are vulnerable with each other. They're around their behavior, right? It's really important it's around their behavior. They have a huge willingness and desire to evolve it. And they're willing to share it with the whole team, not just the leadership team. That's where we get the best discussions on validating the strategy and we also start unlocking that coach cascade because of the vulnerability of the leaders. It it actually attracts the team and the rest of the team to them in order to be coached and the willingness to be coached as well. And so then the line continues, and I've seen this with my companies I've worked with, that golden line of the top line and bottom line actually flows into the performing phase. We're into the compounding phase. The whole thing that keeps a team there, of course, execution system, cash system. We've got the strategy constantly validating, right? We've got the cohesive. We've got the human. But the thing that actually keeps us there is the coach cascade system, is the ability to grow our team at the same speed as which our you know hard edge is growing. The hard edge and soft end need to stay in balance. They both need to grow at the same speed. And with the awareness of this, I love my CEO in the compounding, the performing phase of you know the Bruce Tuckman graph because she knows that the thing that is her number one thing is keeping the coach cascade system growing at the same level as the company is growing that hard edge it's fantastic that she's aware of it i'm coaching that as a coach in that i'm coaching the coach cascade right moving the blind spots moving it around and when we take bruce tuckman's work we know that it's like goes we're happy we formed you know, a little bit of storm. Oh, it's feeling so much better. We have the right players with the right core values. We're all aligned up. We've built the trust. We built the conflictive, dis- you know, all the things we need, knowing that we're all committed to the team goals. And then it takes off into performing. But there is a progression. And the thing that you know, really got me as a CEO. Bruce Tuckman's work has been around since the 60s, I think since before I was born. And the the thing that was great about it is like all the data was there, but I couldn't, I was trying to line up the growth and the, the, you know, the systems and the stages. And when we think of this, you know, you overlay that and you think, oh my God, there's three growth phases. There's seven systems. Really? And I I always say to people, I go, really? Because without it, you're going to have no awareness of what lever you need to pull next without the awareness. They exist regardless of whether you care about them or not. And so I'd rather know about them and put them into the greatest, you know, research out there, plug that in and make great sense out of it with the team than just go, oh, that's as far as we can get. Oh, well. I guess we'll slog her along at 2% growth. 
I'm really tired after 20 years of doing this and I'm going to sell my company for less value than it's worth. That's awful. <laughs> Sorry, that sounds terrible. So we, we know there's seven systems. We know there's three phases. It's starting to sound a little bit complex, but as Einstein said, you know, make things as simple as possible, but no simpler. So as you've just said, they are there. The question yeah. is, do you recognize they're there and do you use that yeah. as a decision-making tool to grow your business or not? Yeah, and you know this. You know, the best thing about this um, whole system, this whole, you know, I've been calling it a strategic growth operating system, right? It's different than some of the others because we combine the strategy with the, the willingness to grow yourself, your team and your business, right? And in turn your life, but it's a cliche, but it's true. And the thing is, is that as someone asked me, I don't know if it was at a workshop I did or a webinar I did. They said, you use the yin and yang symbol and, you know, to represent the soft edge and the hard edge, the three systems, the three systems, three hug in the middle. And you put this gray, you put an extra like swoosh in there that was, you know, sort of the overlap of the systems, why it works, why it connects. And then around the whole yin and yang is like the coach cascade system. And it sounds super complicated, but in that particular webinar, I just boiled it down that to the simple of you've got to connect the soft edge, which is the team, to a team result. And it's got to be further out. It's got to be like we think of a near term, we call a three hug. It must be something they own and control. And it must be connected to the hard edge, which is your business which is what you do every day in your business, cash, execution, and, and you know, align the strategy. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and so I always build that up. And if you can think about it, I always peel away all the systems at the end of the day, because the outcome is if we don't have the team balanced with the business, right? And and anyone listening is thinking, okay, if you're, if, if you're out of balance right now, and I can tell you, you know, because you're spending more time than you thought you would in your business. If you're spending more time you thought you ever would in a business, don't think, oh, that's just what it's like to build a business. That's not true. Because if we can get the team and business in balance, that's what the system helps us with. We get the team and, and, and business in balance. It will give you your time back, your life back. I love when a partner, you know, the CEO's partner comes to me and gives me a hug and I've never met them before. <laughs> It is my favorite thing in the world because when your business is mm. out of balance, your life is out of balance. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's not the other way around. When your life is out of balance, your business usually is, an out of, is not mm. out of balance. Yeah. It's the business as an entrepreneur, a CEO, doesn't matter if it's your business or your hired gun, yeah. when those two things, your team or business is out of balance, you're, you are putting in more hours than you ever thought you would and you are deciding what, how long you can do it for. Mm -hmm. That is the thing that we know metronomics unlocks. It's, yep. a, it's so exciting. That's why it's so fun. It's not just about the business. It's about your life. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. so good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you yep. know, a lot of people don't know why on metronomics they're on the cover. It's my backyard, which is Whistler Blackcomb and one of the back bulls. Well, if you look closely, you'll see the skiers coming down in a beautiful powder day. It's because I was never willing to give that up while, bu while building a business. Many people ask me, well, how many days do you really get on the mountain? I go, what do you mean? Of course, I'm not going to live in Whistler and not get the days on the mountain. Like that would be ridiculous. That's, uh, you know, I live here for the balance. And, uh, you know, that's why I was so after the repeatable playbook that would give us balance. Right. And all of this has played out, you know, in our last episode, we were talking about how did this come to be? You know, it probably would have never come to be without, you know, curious CEOs calling going, you must have a system as well as coaches asking, you're doing something more. Yeah. And all that led to like breaking it down and each book in the, you know, and now there's four just, and even the M game, you know, that chapter eight, the critical path, 
is like any CEO, go read that. It'll take you like five yeah. minutes, maybe 10, and you'll go, oh, that's yeah. where I am. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah that so awareness you, you, is so important. You can plot where you are. Is it easy? Yeah. Are you going fast? Yeah. Do you have confidence? Ease, speed, yes. speed confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. yeah. yep. that's what I was looking for. I was looking, mm -hmm. I didn't want it to, I knew it wasn't going to be easy, but I was looking for a little ease. Right. Mm -hmm. I wanted some speed because time is our scarcest resource. And so I don't want to waste time. Right. And then, you know, that confidence was I wanted to know every time I would get to a decision with my team that nobody would hesitate. We would make mm -hmm. the decision. If it wasn't perfect at the time, whatever, we'll make another decision, another decision. But yep. confidence was so important. Yep. Mm -hmm. E speed and confidence. That's what we want. Yes. Mm -hmm. We could have called those phases E speed and confidence, but those are the outcomes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So bringing it to a close, if any of the listeners want to find out more about that, chapter eight in the M game is all about the critical path. Um, it's a, as you can see, it's a pretty thin book. I think I read this the day it came out in about 90 minutes. So it's an easy read. Uh, and if you read this, you'll probably realize what's missing from not your, just your business life, but your life as well. Yes. yes. And Shannon, I think there is a an assessment on metronomics.com yeah. where people can find out for themselves where they fall in to these three phases. Yeah. Foundation, and momentum. Yeah, there's, so I love it because um, lots of people read the book. It's in the book as well. But if you go to the mgamebook.com, if you go there, it will take you to the assessment or I'll take you to a page on our site. We'll take you, it'll take you directly to the assessment. That's the goal. And it will take such a short amount of time. And I can tell you, if you just read chapter eight, that will just confirm where you are if you take that assessment, but it'll give you some insight about the key questions that are important for your awareness as a CEO, as a leader, on what we want you to think about in growing your business. We're here to help you grow. We're here to, you know, get you to where you want to go in the time that you want to do it in. It's all about your business Olympics and that assessment will give you a really good idea of where this system will meet you. And that's what this system does, meet you exactly where you are, and then we can grow together from there. Awesome. Thanks, Shannon. So we'll put uh, the link to the, to the assessment in the show notes, um, and we'll yes. maybe have a think about whether we put the, uh, the critical path picture in the show notes. Maybe, maybe <laughs> not. Uh, we'll, we'll might, might put a cleaned up version in there and, uh, you know, and, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe we'll, we'll see how brave we are. Right? <laughs> oh, I'm brave. I always put it in and then go, oh, yeah. my gosh, oh my gosh, but they'll, they'll appreciate it after listening and watching this. Yeah, it'll put it in context for sure. It, yeah. it looks complex, yeah, sure. but you can't make things any more simple no. than they are. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. Awesome. That was that was amazing, Shannon. Thank you so much. Uh, that's probably yeah, answered everyone's you. questions on the three phases of metronomics. Thank you. Super fun again to be a guest on my own podcast. Love your questions. Uh, I can't wait till we do it again. Thanks, yeah. Jed. Well, um, I think we might even invite you back to your own podcast. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Maybe you'll be a guest. Maybe I'll be a guest. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, Shannon. And uh, we'll catch up soon. Yeah. Thank you. Tip Top is brought to you by Metronomics. To find out more about Metronomics and how this 20 plus year old proven system will save you time and money as you grow up your business, visit metronomics.com. That is M E T R O N. O -M -I -C -S .com. Also search for Metronomics in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and anywhere else the great podcasts are found. <laughs>